and hey y'all in for h and h here 12 meter band uh what i want to talk to you about is vertical antennas so you know if you've watched my videos for a while for the last uh, almost three years or so i have four antennas three are wire i have the fritzel uh, off center fed dipole the fd4 and I have the, it's the three kilowatt model i have a 160 meter doublet that i built and then i have a zs6 bravo kilo whiskey that i got from ni4l.com because quite frankly i couldn't justify building that one uh, for what it would cost in the time versus what ni4l charges for the antenna and then i have a roughly 25 year old no it's approaching 30 years old Cushcraft R5 that I bought in the mid 1990s and um, this is the second QTH for it that antenna usually does not beat the wire uh, except 10 12 and 15 okay it gets it has a chance there so I want to show you this right now this is the 12 meter band the station I'm listening to is in Vermont Look at the meter. Now I'm going to switch over to the ZS6 BKW. About a month and a half or so ago, broke down on me after about two weeks. And now he's pretty good on that one right now. They could not give me a any details on a minute. A few minutes ago, he was stronger on the vertical. And but it was the max version. It was the. And this is the off-center fed dipole. So they could not give me an estimate on how long it would take to build a new one. And so then he had, he had these Black Friday sales. Uh, Definitely stronger on the ZS6 BKW. There's off center fed. And went ahead and it saved about fourteen hundred dollars on. And there's the ZS6 uh, BKW. The, the store ship uh, version. And there's the vertical. So, now, before you think, oh, well, then the ZS6 BKW must be better than the off-center fed dipole. Well, remember with antennas, it has to do with where your lobes of gain are. The lobes of gain, and that is antenna dependent. And so, you know, and they can be affected by surrounding objects and all that sort of thing. Excuse it, but, you know, generally, if you're going to put up two antennas, make both of them the same type of antenna and install them perpendicular to one another and you want to kind of you know you want to keep them i would say at least a quarter wave apart um of the you know for the lowest band you'll operate that's not always possible and and i've said many times antennas are more forgiving than we give them credit for i've got two that run too close parallel because i had no choice but don't tell them they're not supposed to work so well. <laughs> my ZS6 BKW and my 160 meter doublet run parallel to one another. One's a little higher than the other, uh, but they're they're not a uh, they're not even a quarter away quarter wave apart uh, on the lower frequencies. But they they just didn't get the memo that they're not supposed to work so well. Now, I don't have the off-center fed, I mean, sorry, I don't have the doublet in the equation right now because it comes directly into my uh, amplifier slash antenna tuner, which I prefer to call an antenna matching unit, and I don't even have it on right now. I've been working, guys, with just the uh, radio power here, which is 200 watts, if you look right here. And I, I got a 5.9 to, where was that guy? Lithuania. Um, a little bit ago. 24.939, same same band. He might still be down there. Let me see. I'm going to use my band stacking. There he is. That's him. Lima Yankee 5 Alpha. You guys know me in band stacks. I love it. There's my CW band stack. There's the... Lower portion of sideband, upper portion of sideband. So anyway, I just wanted you to see that, you know, sometimes the vertical wins. Now, there he is. He's 10 over 9 on the vertical. It's neck to neck, really, with the ZS6 BKW. And there he is on the off-center fed dipole. Now, he's only about 
two or three dB over nine there, whereas on the other two antennas, he's he's bumping ten over nine. There's ver there's now this guy. There's vertical. There's ZSX BKW. There's off center fed dipole. See, it just depends on 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 lobes of gain. So when where the you remember a, di a, a a vertical is going to give you okay no surrounding objects notwithstanding the vertical is going to give you a circular pattern. The dipoles are going to be skewed. They're going to have lobes of gain and nulls. And so if the dipole has a lobe of gain in the direction of the station you're listening to, it's likely to beat the vertical. But the vertical would be able to fill in a gap where that dipole has a null. Now, the thing is, though, if you've got multiple, if you ha like I mentioned earlier, if you have two dipoles, even multi multiband dipoles, if you had two ZS6BKWs, two Bravo Kilo W's, that's ZS6 Bravo Kilo W, and you installed them perpendicular to one another, where one has lobes and uh, the other one has nulls, but then when you switch to the other one where it has lobes, the first one has nulls. So you've got, you know, theoretically, you've got circular covers there with, with the uh, extra gain you're going to get from the, uh, from the lobes of gain. Because remember, what's happening is when you have a null, that means the gain went somewhere else. So that's all we do with an antenna. If you watch my video uh, on antenna gain, we're really just stealing from one direction and adding it to another direction. So uh, that's how that's how a, a Yagi works. You're 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 stealing from the the backside and focusing the signal toward the forward direction. But I, I just wanted you to see that. Uh, that difference there. That's vertical. ZS6BKW. Off center fed dipole. See, it's just switching between the three. Now, one other thing before I go, let me mention you got to take into account too that when your signal, no matter what type of antenna you have, whether it be vertically polarized or horizontally polarized, once it gets up into the ionosphere for the refraction, it could tumble. It could switch polarization. I mean, it could go even in between. It could be horizontal. And so, uh, you know, you don't have to get, you don't want to get too hung up on, uh, do I need a vertical? Do I need, now the vertical is going to tend to have a lower takeoff angle. If you want to work more DX, a vertical can do that. Now the, um, I get one other bonus, what a, what a vertical will do. Uh, some ways I Let me move yeah. to a different frequency. Now I'm only using amp one. Okay, watch what happens if I pull in amp two. I'm just dragging in more noise. If amp one's enough to get me barely up off the zero, then that's all the gain I need. You're not going to hear anybody below the noise floor. So improve your signal to noise ratio. Run amp one, and in fact, run IPO if you can. When you get up to 12 and 10 megahertz, unless the station is really, really strong, IPO might not be enough. But look at the noise level there. And again, that's with amp one. Now there's the ZS6 BKW. Now it's picking up some local power line noise. There's the off-center fed dipole. Look at that noise floor. I'm gonna turn on amp two. So you can see the noise floor is... Here we go. Noise floor is S4. Vertical, S6 can't really judge by the ZS6 BKW because where it's mounted, it's picking up here. That grind is picking up some power line noise. So, uh, but what I want you to see there is the vertical is going to naturally pull in more natural noise, QRN atmospherics where the horizontal is not, uh, it is less susceptible to the atmospheric noise. All right, so trade-offs all the time in life, isn't it? So the vertical is going to give you a good low takeoff angle for DX, a more even pattern in all directions. Will it outperform a dipole? Not necessarily, not in the directions where the dipole has uh, lobes of gain. 
and uh, multiband dipoles as you're using them on the higher frequencies. The harmonically related frequencies, those lobes of gain get stronger, more narrow, but stronger. And of course the nulls get deeper too, it's a trade-off. So uh, the other thing too, as far as DX, if you get that horizontal antenna up at least a half wavelength above the ground beneath it, it'll compete with that vertical on takeoff angle too but you still get the lower noise floor. So, you know, why do people use verticals? Well, really because of the practicality of it. Um, you know, if you have a situation where you just don't have the, enough real estate to put up horizontal antennas, you know, you just realize you're gonna get, in this case, it's a couple of S units more of noise, but natural noise. It's a little less susceptible to the power line noise as you, as you saw there. But also too, even the power line noise, it, it depends upon how close the antenna is to the power lines and these antennas are running parallel the one the zs6bkw is running parallel to some uh, three phase lines so uh just you know wanted you to hear and see kind of the differences between various different antennas somebody would say oh well an off center fed dipole is the best or a zs6bkw is the best or uh you know a, a doublet's the best now the doublet, you have a lot of wire in the air and you're feeding it with ladder lines, so you got less loss. So it is naturally usually going to be better. But when you get into things like uh, just, just multi-band dipoles, where you installed it's gonna affect it, band conditions are gonna affect it, where the lobes of gain are also going to affect it. But like I said, in the case of the doublet, that's a lot of wire in the air. I've got 250 feet of wire up there and fed with ladder lines, so it's very low loss compared to uh, coax, even though I'm having to use an antenna matching unit on all but a 17 meter band. I, I tuned mine to where it was okay on the 17 meter band. All right, hey, thanks for watching videos on my channel. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. Uh, this video, I guess you could say, maybe targets uh, new operators out there, but that's what, that's what I'm all about. I wanna, wanna help Elmer uh, you folks that are new to this, you know, you can pass a test, but there's still You got to absorb this stuff in smaller doses, I guess All right. Hey, th again, thanks for watching videos on my channel Please stand by for 32 more seconds while I recognize five of the patreon team long haulers who helped make this video possible Thank you 73 from n4 H&H &H.